and um, Sasha Grodsky, <laughs> who is beloved by nine nine people in this room, is going to woo us with the time that she got sick on an adventure. I think that's true. I don't know. She'll tell the story. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm four foot ten, so this is my life. All right. I'm really excited. I've been volunteering at the corner all year, and it's been my goal to tell a story. This is my last corner before I graduate from Bates, so. Um, all right. So because of Bates and because of my time on the Brooks Quimby Debate Council at Bates, I've been able to travel the world with my best friend, Shannon, sitting right here. Um, <laughs> and Shannon and I have been on a lot of adventures together, but one in particular, um, we got really sick and a lot of weird shit happened. Um, so this story starts, uh, I am walking back into a hostel in Temple Bar in the middle of Dublin. I've been gone for the last several hours off on my own and I walk in, Shannon does not know where I've been because we do not have cell phones there. And I am bleeding and I'm covered in blood. And Shannon's first reaction is to say, what the fuck happened to you? Who do I have to beat up? And I say, it's okay, it's okay, I just have a cut on my nose and I can't really figure out why it hasn't stopped bleeding. Um, and so it's about 2 a.m. now, and we're sitting in this 12-person hostel room trying to figure out what's happening while everyone is sleeping around us. And eventually Shannon says, okay, you haven't stopped bleeding. You've been bleeding for three hours now. We have to go to the emergency room. So we go downstairs, and we go to the uh, front desk of our hostel, and we say, how do we get to the emergency room? How do we call an ambulance? And he says, you really you don't want to do that. It's going to take a long time. It's going to be very expensive. Hail a cab and go, go to this hospital. And we're like, OK, we're going to go to this hospital. It's a very well-known Irish hospital. So we get there, and we are far and away the soberest people there. Everyone else there is on substances that I hope never to try. <laughs> but we're also the scariest looking people there, because I am at this point, literally drenched in blood, like head to toe. I've bled all over our hostel bathroom, like things are looking real rough. <laughs> so we eventually, we get in after waiting for a while and the nurse eventually stops the bleeding in my nose. We still don't really know what's wrong. But we get back to our hostel and we go to bed. And we're also both really sick at this point. If you've never been to a debate tournament before, they are breeding grounds for disease and germs and you pretty much can't get out of one without getting at least a little bit sick. So we're pretty sick, and we spend the next day doped up on Irish Sudafed, which if you don't know, their laws on drugs are a lot, you know, less restrictive than ours, so we're kind of both out of our minds in bed, and we just sort of stay tucked in in these hostel beds all day. Um, but we meet a couple of people staying in the room with us. There's a very friendly Nigerian man who tells us he's been living there, just so you know, this is in November, he's been living in this 12-person hostel room since March. <laughs> So we stay in that day, and th that night around 2 a.m., someone comes banging into our hostel room, and Shannon and I are really sick, and he turns on all the lights and disrupts everyone, and everyone's like, oh my god, what's going on? But we all eventually go back to sleep. And then one of the other men in our room gets up, and he goes to the bathroom, and none of us really notice this until the Nigerian man gets up, and he starts saying, why the fuck didn't you flush the toilet? It smells. And he's like yelling and waking everyone up, but talking about how the smell is waking him up, and we're all like, oh god, what's happening? Um, so he eventually goes back to sleep. Uh, and we all kind of get back to sleep. And then around 6 in the morning, everyone else starts trickling out of the room. And then it's just us and the two Eastern European guys who got up to pee in the middle of the night and this one, this one man. Um, and I'm still in bed. Shannon goes to the bathroom out in the hall. And the two men go and the two Eastern European men go to check out. And then there's a banging on the door. And the guy, well, Nigerian man runs back into the room. He has a suitcase with him that's not his. And we go... What happened? And he goes, those two guys peed all over my stuff and tried to check out before I could before I could figure out what had happened. So I stole their suitcase, came back up here, and I called the police. And so Shannon tries to get back into the room at this point. She's I've been tucked up in bed, like the, you know, asleep and whatever, and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Shannon eventually gets back into the room. Oh my, I only have a minute and 20 seconds left. Shannon gets back into the room, and the guy at this point calls her over and is like making her come smell the pee, like all the pee covered clothing. <laughs> I'm still hiding in my bed. And then he unzips the suitcase and he starts wiping up the pee with these two other men's clothing. <laughs> and then we hear knocking on the door, and he quickly zips everything back up, and the police come in and they start questioning him about what's been happening. Um, 
And he says, you know, these two guys peed on my stuff. The two guys come back in. They're trying to say it wasn't them, but we're the only other two people in the room. And we were very sick and in bed and clearly hadn't done it. So eventually the police make the guy give back the suitcase and make the two men pay for the stuff they'd peed on without ever finding out that he had used their clothing to mop up their pee. Thank you. (laughs) 